Yeah, dear viewer, good evening. Uh, welcome to Current Issue. With me tonight, my friend and, and, and the community friend, uh, Clint Custo. Clint running for uh, the, the seat in the Loving District for the U.S. Congress, right? That's right. Okay. Clint, tell me before we start and all that, why, I mean, I know you were a state representative for two term and, and you did a great job in, 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 in Lansing. Why you didn't, for example, run for the state Senate to keep continue working in Michigan other than going to Washington? Yeah, good question. Because a lot of people ask me. Yeah. You know, my profession was I was a prosecutor. Yes. I was a prosecutor for six years, did a tremendous job making sure our streets are safe. And the opportunity came to be able to take that service to a different level and be able to serve people in all capacity. Yes both from a business standpoint, from a community standpoint, also from a criminal justice standpoint. But really, that improvement of Michigan's economy, Michigan's perspective and the growth. So when we looked at that, I was a part of the reinvention of Michigan and bringing Michigan up. So now the opportunity is there to do the same thing in Washington. Okay. So when I looked at running for state senate or running for United States Congress, both opportunities are available. I said, the way I can make an impact to better Americans' lives, to better the lives of all the people of the state of Michigan, all the people of the country, Absolutely. is to be able to run for something that is larger than just in the state. Because I could take those experiences, take those talents, and be able to serve more people. And that's what it's really about. It's about serving the people. So when I looked at the opportunity that had come up, I said, I can make an impact in Washington. I know it's strange to say and it's yeah. cliche, sure. but we can really, as, as Americans and as voters, mm -hmm. we can change our country by having good people, one at a time in Congress, yes. one at a time. And if I looked at the pool of candidates, really, I don't think that they can do the job that I would do, I to see. do the service to serve the people in a way that's unconditional, in a way that's selfless, not selfish. And I think that I would be the best candidate. Give, give me some issues that you could serve the, the citizen of Michigan in Washington than being in the state. Let's talk One about first issues. on immigration. Okay, great. And yes, we need strong walls. We need yes. strong border security. Yes. Because we can't have a system that is lawless. We can't have a system where people come in without going through the right process. Absolutely. And then there are the people who are waiting in the process that uh -huh. has taken them longer because of the other people. So let's fix our immigration system, but let's do it in a smart way. Let's not just say, okay, build the wall and, and that's enough. Mm -hmm. No, we have other issues. Let's make sure our, you, we're using our technology that is safe and secure yes. to figure out who's coming in. And let's expedite the process too. What about all those companies that have people out there that are waiting for their work visa sure. that can improve mm -hmm. our, our businesses Economy in the United States? Economy and, and uh, bring them more jobs, and honestly. bringing jobs. Each here. one of them will bring five jobs if, if we could have them here. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, so let's look at these things, but be smart about it and yes. use our technology that is so advanced yeah. that we're not actually utilizing. So we look at it from that perspective. Let's look at it from a perspective of money in the budget. Yes. I've the seen, roads and all that. Yes. You know, how could you bring that money here? I've seen directly the impact of the state yes. government begging and asking for money from Washington. From federal, yes. When it's really our money. Yes, of course. And Washington says, well, the only way we'll give you this money is if you do A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, let's cut, cut those restrictions and requirements out. Let's give it to the states. They know how they're going to be able to spend their money better than Washington. So I can advocate for that. Let's talk about, you know, protecting our Constitution, protecting life, protecting religious freedom. Yes. We could do some of it at the state level, mm -hmm. but certainly there's some we can do in Washington. Yes. And as far as our foreign affairs, let's make sure we support our military because they can then spread that freedom and liberty in those countries, especially yes. in the Middle East, especially yes. with Iran doing mm -hmm. what they're doing, especially with China and Russia yes. infiltrating our systems and North Korea with their nuclear proliferation, just like Iran. Yeah. And we could, we could say, look, we are going to make sure that freedom and democracy and equality is out there. 
because that will then create a stronger America. When there's a stronger America, we will have more jobs here. We will have, be on an even playing field. And lastly, jobs is to make sure that we're creating jobs. We're creating an incentive for people to stay in the United States and not be at a disadvantage from other countries. Great. Uh, all that, it's a great. But there was, there was a resolution in the House to protect uh, the ethnic uh, minorities in the Middle East. Nothing happened. Uh, our Vice President Pence had a few meetings and all that, but again, nothing happened. How do you feel toward that? Because this is very important, not to the Middle Eastern community, but to, to a lot of ethnic that they are in the Middle East, if yeah. in Iran, in Turkey, in, you know, in all that area, to protect their, their faith, protect their, their, their uh, freedom to be there. Well, if you come with the premise that we are going to have liberty, religious freedom, and we want to spread that, Yes. then you need somebody on the inside mm -hmm. to be able to explain the culture, yes. explain the cultural nuances, explain the religious nuances, explain how people are being oppressed, mm -hmm. suppressed and persecuted. But it can't happen with Vice President Pence without someone in his ear, especially if someone's in his ear from the inside. Yes. As a member of Congress, I would be able to do that, whether it be the vice president, the president, the speaker of the house, the sure. leader in the Senate, or everyone else from Houston, from Texas, from Kentucky, from Tennessee, sure. from uh, yeah. Oklahoma, that they, they can then come to somebody or me going to them and saying, hang on, we're making these laws, but you have to keep something in mind. Here's how the culture works over there. Here's what's going on with the religious minorities. Here's what's going on with the cultural minorities. Yes. Here are some of the issues that I'm hearing about directly mm -hmm. because of the relationships I have with people in the community. Sure. That, I think, is a major advantage. It's at a major advantage to the, to of the, to the, to the, to the Congress and to have somebody who understands those cultures. Yeah. You know. Wally, you know yeah. this, yeah. is that when somebody is advocating, it's much easier to advocate from within the building than from outside. Absolutely. So many times uh, people go there and they sit at the table oh. in front of the committee mm -hmm. and... And politicians love that. And they love that yeah. and then... <laughs> nothing. See you later. See you later. Nothing. But when that person is on the inside doing yes, it... that makes a difference. It makes a difference. Yes. And I've been able to do that in the state of Michigan. Yes. And I will do it in Washington. But mm. the only way I can do it is on for people to go out and vote. By sending on, you to Washington. By sending me to Washington. Then let's talk about the campaign. How is the campaign doing? And tell me, uh, your district, 11th district, what cover? So the 11th district is one of the districts in Michigan that has western Wayne County and western and northern Oakland County. It has okay. Plymouth, Canton, Livonia, and Northville. All right, that's Wayne County. It has South Lyon and Lyon Township and Wald Lake and Milford and Novi, Wixom, Wolverine Lake, Commerce. We have White Lake. The city of Farmington, some of us Bloomfield, Waterford, some of Auburn Hills, some of Rochester Hills. Wow, cover a lot of states. Absolutely. Troy, yeah. Clawson, yeah. Birmingham, mm -hmm. and the city of Bloomfield. And it's set over 700,000 people. Is that when you, when you mentioned, for example, West of Bloomfield, is that the whole city of West of Bloomfield? Or you mentioned Troy, right? Is that the whole city or Not part of it? Not the whole city. It yeah. has the northwest part no, no, of see. West Bloomfield. I see. And same thing with the other cities. Same thing too. with some of the other cities. So if somebody say, I live in Novi. Novi I could will have it. All of Novi The whole will have Novi, it. yeah. But if somebody's yeah. in West Bloomfield, West Bloomfield some part of, of that Bloomfield, West Bloomfield. Well, not, some will. Yes. As we say, there is, there is the, uh, that area is, is good, there is a good percentage of the Middle Eastern community and other ethnic minority, like the Jewish community, you know, the, the, the Greek and Italian and all that, beside the Middle Eastern. Did you reach all those communities? Because honestly, as you come in from an ethnic minority, I know you're born here, but you come from ethnic minority, we have the same issue. The we same have issue. Similar we're issues. facing the same issue. Are you reaching to them? Because for them to send you to Washington, it's a huge plus for them. So I worked a lot with the Asian community. Yes. Worked a lot with the Armenian community, the mm -hmm. Jewish community worked a lot with the Chaldean community, the Arabic community, yes. uh, in, in Livonia. Mm -hmm. So these North ethnic Field, minor, Livonia, yeah, yeah, Northville, Livonia, yeah. there, are, there are a lot of them there. Yes. And Troy as Troy, well, they yes. have two churches, one in yeah. Troy, one in 
Yes. Livonia and the Chaldean community, of course. Yes. So we share similar issues. And what I've done in Michigan is always be a representative for them. The Asian community, the yes. Indian community, whoever and you sponsor, they are. you sponsor some resolution have nothing to do with the Chaldean. Nothing and we know that. <laughs> so you are representing the whole community. I represent yeah. the whole community. And, and especially in these days when you need a good voice, you need a represent, representative. So often, you know, we seem, we feel like Washington, we're disconnected. And yes. only a select few are able to tap into that. But I think I bring a change. I bring a conservative change to that. Somebody who is there for the people. Somebody who is only a phone call away, that's only a step away. Mm -hmm. A friend, a neighbor, a brother, sure. yeah. and a son of the community, of the community at large. Not just the Chaldean community, not just the Middle Eastern community, but all communities. And that is kind of a goal that I have. And I do it in a conservative way as a Republican. And so on August 7th, Tuesday, August 7th, not how not many? Too far how many away. Not too far. So, so I want you honestly at the end to give me a message because there is a few days, seven, eight, nine days left, and and this is the days that they could reach the people directly. You could, you could. A lot of them are undecided yet. So that's the time that you could go and keep them in your camp. Absolutely. And here's the thing: you want somebody that one is a good person and has a strong reputation and you know and you know through the community all of the things I've done and how I operate in a fair and honest way. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two, you want somebody who can accomplish the task. Yes. Not just find problems Absolutely. but find solutions. Yes. So I've done things like fight the opioid abuse problem which you know about, fix our mental health system, looking at things to make sure government is not encroaching on people's private rights. Uh, looking at child sexual assault and improving our system, and many, many, many other things. So you look at somebody who's going to say, here's a problem, but I don't stop there. I find the solution and I get it enacted into law. And then you want somebody that shares those values. Uh, the con the, I'm obviously on the conservative side, uh, the beliefs in, in life, the beliefs in religious freedom, the beliefs in making sure that government is small and not large. Uh, and fighting for lower taxes, pro-business. So you want somebody who, who is similar to you in that. And then lastly, I think you want somebody who uh, you can relate to and will be available. Yes. I've done coffee hours constantly yes. uh, and office hours locally constantly, and I meet with constituents. So I think those are the things you want, and I have all of those qualities. So on August 7th, mm -hmm. when the election comes up in Michigan in the 11th District, go and vote. First of all, it's a duty, it's a right, it's Absolutely. a privilege. Absolutely, privilege. So yeah. let's take advantage of that duty, right, privilege, and go and vote, uh, because those are the blessings that we have being in a free country that so many people do not have. And we see it time and time again because in other countries of who's being elected and, and the process. But we have a fair process. Absolutely. And so on August 7th, go and vote, and when you see the box with Clint Kesto, fill it all Mark in. Mark it down. Well, Clint, I thank you for coming here. I wish you the best, and, and hopefully uh, August 8 or August 7 at night will celebrate your victories being, being the, our representative in U.S. Congress. Well, I thank you, Wally, yeah. and I thank MEA, and of course that night we we'll look forward to seeing you there and, Absolutely. and bringing out the good news mm -hmm. and, and the success that we're having in our campaign. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Dear reviewer, that was my interview with Eklain Kistu. I always say I support the people who qualified for the job, if it's in a community or outside the community. And Clint Custo approved more than one time, four years in, 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 in Michigan uh, Congress, and, and his involvement with the community, not just the Middle East, I mean, the whole community, approved to me that he is very well qualified for this job. So I'm asking you to send a qualified people to the right job, and Clint, he's one of them. So on August 7, I, I, I beg you, I encourage you to go and vote first and then vote for Clint Custo because he is the right person for us to present us in Washington. Thanks for watching and good night.